Hey guys, welcome back. This is Troy and Dr. John with Well Adjusted here with Advanced Age Management. Hey, it's been a long time, huh? I know, too long, too long. Hi everybody, welcome. So we took a break, we were on uh, iTunes and we were over at uh, WTAM on yep. the radio show and now we're really just kind of formally getting the podcast back together. So, yeah. hey, this year you're gonna see a lot of us and you'll get a lot of great information. I think we've grown to two huge locations at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, two big locations and um, the synergy is wonderful. Um, patients are having really good experiences. I, if I could, you guys that are watching on Facebook, please let us know if you have questions. Please comment on our podcast here and um, the videos because that helps us to determine what, it, what do you really need to know. You know, and it directs us into what to talk about. Uh, but we'll we'll talk a little bit about what makes us different. I think that would be a good place to start sure. for today. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes us different? Because um, when I first started doing this, gosh, uh, 15 years, years ago, ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there weren't that many people doing this. This was a bit more, well, I'm not sure if this is acceptable. You know, this is sounds like performance enhancing. Well, no garbage. Of course it is. You know, that's what life should be is performance enhancing. It's about our quality of life. It's about enhancing everything that we do. But it was a little bit more um, questionable, I suppose. There wasn't as much data out. There wasn't as much studies. Now there's a plethora of really good medical studies and the bias that other docs had against things like hormone replacement therapy um, is, is really dwindling. I mean, you get some of the old dinosaurs out there that are still not, they're not sure. They think somehow this is linked to prostate cancer, which has been disproven um, for years now. But, um, but so there was some of those biases out there, but now people are more open to it because they hear more about it. There's a lot more patients that have good experiences. Um, and the studies, I mean, let's just be honest, the studies are pretty good. There's less side effects to these kind of hormone replacement therapy programs than there are when I was in family practice and you were in general medicine when we're prescribing most of our medications. So I think dispelling some of those old myths um, really opened the door for a, a lot more people. So then um, there's more practices that are getting into doing this. Mm -hmm. And you've seen some of that too, yeah? We sure have. Yeah. Um, a lot of them here locally even. Yeah. So there's there's some practices that are, you know, say general medicine and they just kind of want to dabble and they've, they've some of their patients come to them and say, oh, man, you know, I've heard about this testosterone or, you know, I have a buddy that has great experience. You know, can you put me on this? And believe it or not, once in a while, they, they, they put them on these testosterone creams and they don't know what they're doing with labs or the side effects and they don't know how to manage ancillaries. They have no idea how to hook this into what we believe in with wellness medicine and true integration. Um, and quality of life and reducing medical risk, but they put them on a little testosterone and, and such. But so there's a lot, of, so there's some people doing it like that. And then the other avenue, some of these business folks have come in and said, hey, Good let's, let's, let's cut this. Let's start eliminating a bunch of the medical, uh, medical things that they do and wellness and prevention. And let's make this a testosterone mill. Mm -hmm. Let's bring people in like an assembly line and just give them testosterone. Sure. I mean, we've seen, we, we've talked about yeah. a clinic or two that's doing that. Well, and we have two of those locally, and I know there's a big one in Columbus as well. I mean, it's just mm. basically, you're just in a line just going through, and they actually do the injections at the clinic. So you're basically mm. just standing in line and just boom, one after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. And is that really changing their health for the long term? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what you're kind of alluding to. And if, I mean, if you guys don't know Dr. Koch, I mean, if you haven't um, seen our podcast before, or maybe haven't heard of advanced stage management, Dr. Coca's credentials in this stuff, I know he's not going to toot his own horn, but I'm going to for him, are just unbelievable. You know, the, the amount of uh, studying and the amount of, you know, extracurricular and extra work he's gone and, and put into and extra programs and training into this hormone replacement therapy and then training me, um, you know, to work with this is incredible. So guys, if you're considering this, what really makes us different is number one, the experience of a guy like this um, who's working directly with you. So I think that's the number one thing that makes us considerably different is a lot of the other programs, you're meeting a staff member. Yeah. You're meeting a staff member who's doing a blood draw, maybe taking a history, emailing some stuff over to a doctor who's interpreting things, saying do this, and then that person basically is treating you. So To reiterate and piggyback on it, so they have usually the practice like this that is more of a business. They have a medical director and they have a, a number of staff members. And typically these staff members are not well-trained medically. They're not, certainly not nurse practitioners or physician assistants, and they're probably not even medical assistants mm -hmm. in many cases. 
So these are folks that are trained internally. They just, you know, trained by the, the business owners and they are giving a lot of medical advice. Mm -hmm. And they're doing the job of the contracted doctor that is, you know, kind of running the running the, the, the practice, but really they're not running the practice. They're just kind of looking at the labs and, you know, writing the prescriptions. But most of, and, and I've seen many of these patients that have come to us mm -hmm. from these other clinics, and it really is a yellow flag. Folks, I wanna make sure that we fought really hard in this industry to make this medically legitimate and to look at this, you know, doing this in a, an appropriate way that minimizes any side effects and that looks for things that could be a problem and head them off before that, sure. that is the case. Or use appropriate doses or appropriate ancillaries or look for things that may happen and again, you know, get in front of them. But here you have, but that those are done, those decisions are made by guys like you and I mm -hmm. that have had years of experience managing patients, years of experience with seminars and trainings and certifications and such. I think it's a very dangerous model to have a doctor or a PA running the practice and having these surrogates that are not well trained manage the patients. I can't remember what some of my patients said that you know these folks are called, but you know they're they're maybe staff associates or whatever. Or this is my clinical coordinator. That's their clinical, and so the that person calls the patients and you know basically answers the medical questions. And when they don't know something, maybe they check with the doctor. But I, that's that's really that's very low level. And I think we're going to get back to the more side effects yeah. now, yeah. which is what we fought so hard against doing this in a real medical way. That's looking at it as a preventive medicine entity practice that also uses hormone optimization. You talk about the legs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the legs of the stool. You know, how are we supporting our patients? We're doing it with coaching them on nutrition, proper medical nutrition. We're doing it with coaching proper exercise, stress management, appropriate amounts of sleep, sleep yeah. their mental health, their lifestyle choices, you know, looking at other comorbidities with, with their medical problems. Half of these guys don't even know what the contraindications are to some of these things. It's pretty crazy, huh? It's, it's, it's scary, but it's not only scary, but it, it delegitimizes um, this field of medicine. So, it sure does. you know, when I, I just went to the Age Management Medical Group conference in November, and I'm going to be going to another conference in, in April coming up here, and there's a big push, because these are the specialists in the nation, there's a big push for us to separate ourselves as very knowledgeable medical practitioners that have been doing this a long time and do it right from these term and burnham clinics that are basically just testosterone mills. It's first I've heard of that and it's uh, that's kind of exciting actually to see that they want to make a separation from hey yeah. you know this to you know the 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 type of medicine that it's designed to be. Yeah. You know, when you look at prevention and let's go back to I love that you talked about the the the, the basically the legs on the stool. You know, these things, I think that's the biggest thing that really, when you look at it, separates the two is mm -hmm. the quality of the program is based on um, us genuinely caring about yes, changing the quality of their life, number one, so the yeah. symptoms that are bothering them. Number two, the potential for other, other comorbidities and other, you know, life-changing or life-shortening diseases down the road. Right. If you want to touch on that, maybe. Well, I would say, too, that this is an expanding field. Like, every field of medicine is expanding. You know, the general doctor now has the hardest job in the world because <laughs> he or she has to figure out, you know, well, what are the advances in every area? But here with us, the, these there's a lot of advancements in age management medicine. And what is age management medicine? Mm -hmm. It's basically just trying to battle the symptoms and the conditions that, uh, that are more common in aging. You know, these things that happen to us um, or happen to people with hormone deficiencies and trying to make their life better. So it touches many aspects of medicine. And the more I know about medicine in general, the more you know about medicine, the more we can help that patient. So if you have some clinical coordinator that got a one month training that's helping you with your medical life, that person is not qualified to do this. They're qualified to retake your order maybe, but that's, you know, that's it or give you some simple advice. But as far as, you know, again, the legs on the stool, this is a multimodality treatment program. Mm -hmm. This is not just about testosterone. We are looking at multiple hormones. We are managing things like simple diabetes even and insulin resistance with folks. I know you believe you're really on top of that. Even in, in um, the physical medicine practice, 
um, uh, you know, here in Medina, th they're doing it right. They're treating the whole patient. So the same thing we do with age management medicine, it's not just correcting testosterone. It's looking at all the hormones, you know, what things are out of balance, What's, what are their cardiovascular risks? What mm -hmm. are their cancer risks? I mean, there's so much to this kind of medicine. It's not just about hormones. And the family doctors don't have the time. Mm -hmm. They have five to seven minutes to see the patient. These are 10 minute appointments. They have to write prescriptions, do their charting, and you know, God bless them, I, I don't, that's why I got out. Like, I don't, I don't wanna spend seven minutes with the patient. Mm -hmm. And now I can't, I can't even shut up at 20 minutes <laughs> with these podcasts, so, right? So, um, but we care about people and it starts with passion. Like if you have passion for this, it shows. That's what my patients tell me and I know you hear it all the time and so does Nick too here. We hear it because we care about people. It has to start there. It cannot start from a business. That's crap. I mean, the business end of it comes when you have passion and when you grow a good practice and you treat people well. But this is a comprehensive approach. This is not just a simple hormone. We are helping people change their lives. We give advice every day on some general medical issues. Most of our guys, right, they're 40 and older. I mean, we take some you know, folks in their 30s that are appropriate as well. But a lot of our guys are in, say, in their 40s or 50s or 60s. This middle age group has a lot of either comorbidities or risk markers. Or potential risk potential. Mm -hmm. And what do we want to do? We we'll want to mitigate it. Right. Yeah. We want to get them before it becomes a problem. And only if you have a good background in you know, some general medicine can you really do that. Can you really look at, you know, oh man, you know, this guy's at Elevated risk. Cardiac CRP. Yes, sir. Tie that in with some cholesterol and some family yeah. history and things like that and be able to look at that and kind of put those pieces together and go, hey, you got a problem coming down the road. Absolutely. If we don't get on nutrition. Right, and gut health too. Gut I health. know, you know yeah. you've done some podcasts with you know, your chiropractors sure. and integrative doctors here you know, about gut health. Gut health is huge. And I can guarantee you that at some of these, you know, more term and burnham clinics, they're not talking about gut health. You know, they're not talking about the cardiac risks and the comorbidities sure. and things like that. That's valuable information that is being missed in some of these clinics where we are separate, you know, because we're going to look at these things with our comprehensive blood work. The other thing is that Jordan and I don't answer to anybody. We answer to ourselves. Um, so meaning that I don't have to, I don't care what an, uh, an algorithm says. I don't have to answer to some sort of business owner that tells me, oh, you can only do this because it costs too much money. We will get whatever labs the patient <laughs> needs because sure. we care about them. Yeah. We will give them whatever advice we think is appropriate, even if it is beyond the scope of what we do here because we care. Mm -hmm. We'll send them back to their family doc. I mean, the other day I told someone that, has a family history full of cardiac disease, but you know they, their doctor hasn't done anything preventive. I mean, I, I did send him for a coronary calcium scan. I sent him for a stress test, and um, I did some advanced cardio metabolic risk markers. Way and, beyond what we would do. Yeah, yeah, this is not what a testosterone clinic does. But, and we don't necessarily have to do that for everybody, but we can if we want to, because we care and because we have that knowledge. I'm going to kind of dovetail onto one thing you said here real quick. I'm going to steal this from a young doctor, um, and her name's Dr. Faith. Uh, she's a friend of mine out in California. She put this post up on Instagram, and I loved this, and I think this kind of has been uh, something we've championed here at Advanced Spine and certainly at Advanced Age Management, and I really haven't mentioned this to you yet. But I love this little post where she said, if you treat the problem, win some, you lose some, right? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Treat the patient you always win. That's great. I think it's a great point. And I think that's, um, I think that's something that we can really say that we don't do good here. We do great. What do you yeah. say, Nick? Nick's that's behind right. the scenes back yeah. there. Um, but uh, he helps right along with this. Um, let's talk a little bit about the new patient process. Sure. Maybe for someone out there who goes, hey, I'm having, I'm tired, you know, libido's decreased, I'm increased abdominal weight, I just got on a high blood pressure medicine, you know, my health seems to be declining in my 40s, I don't feel good, something's changing. What's it like for a new patient coming through? What, what should they expect out there? When you come in, what to expect as you walk in? Yeah, well, I would say first, this is a friendly environment. This is a wellness environment. The first thing that a lot of patients tell me is, wow, I feel comfortable coming here. You know, your staff is nice, they're respectful, you know, but, and they respect, we respect your privacy too. Mm -hmm. And you're not sitting out there with a bunch of sick people and waiting. So it is a comfortable environment and is a very, uh, uh, patient-centered environment um, that is wellness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's a discussion. I mean, we wanna hear about your symptoms and we wanna get to know you. We have, 
the detailed questionnaires, we do a detailed history and physical, um, and, and we do a comprehensive blood work. So the, the blood work really helps us to look at what's going on objectively, but you have to match the blood work with the story mm -hmm. that the patient's telling you, because again, we don't just treat numbers, and there's some instances where the numbers are borderline, but the patient's symptoms are not, and the patient case is mm -hmm. not. So we make decisions based on the patient. As you said, treat the patient, not just the symptom or the condition. That's right. So what's the whole patient telling you? But here, you know, you're gonna have your blood drawn. It's a very simple process, but we get a lot of information from the blood draw. You know, we're gonna get things like biomarkers and body composition here as well. You know, we have Nick, our nutrition and exercise expert and clinical coordinator who helps people through the process. But really it's as simple as just give us a call mm -hmm. and we'll set you up with, um, with the screening labs and a history and physical. And that really sets the stage to, are you a candidate for hormone replacement therapy, hormone optimization, and some of the other things that, that we may do here. Yeah, and it's a pretty simple process. You know, it's, uh, I, I do like that it's relatively comfortable. You know, when you see most family doctor's offices, you go in, like you said, you're sitting in the waiting room with 20, 30 people. Yeah, I don't wanna go. Yeah, here you have one patient scheduled per hour, yeah. you know, so yeah. you're the only one. Yeah. So you're gonna walk into a little lounge and, and be greeted by some of the staff, probably either the, either yourself or myself, typically, when we're walking in. He has in. a lounge down um, here, I don't have a lounge. <laughs> <here. I'm working laughs> um, it's great, here. Nick did a good job with that, so I can't take the credit for yeah. it, he did it. Um, but, you know, you're gonna be greeted by, you know, staff, and like you said, some detailed questionnaires, and I, I, I like, these questionnaires because they're different, they're general health, like you would at a family doctor, right. past medical history, right. but they dive into your wellness. How are you? So they're gonna yeah. ask questions about how are you feeling? Like what are, what are the things that are bothering you? So that's what I really yeah. like about the screening initially. And then um, the history itself also goes, not only into your general health, but how are you feeling? Right. Which I think is a very different thing. And not just emotionally, but just physically, how are you feeling? What's bugging you? You know, so we can then, like you said, match those symptoms after we do the blood draw and kind of put it together and go, here's the best way to help. Yeah. Um, you know, perhaps hormone optimization. A lot of times, number two in priority, uh, nutrition. Yeah, nutrition. A lot of guys are exercising and then hormones, but they miss pillar number two, which is the Absolutely. second and most important priority in my, in my opinion, which is, is nutrition. So nutrition most of them are neglecting nice. that. And then sleep is a ginormous yeah. issue. So I think that those are the big four we focus on, of course, many other and many others. But I think when you put all those together, mm -hmm. um, great, great synergy. And I also think it's important to note that we're not going to replace your family doctor. We're not looking to right. work against right. your family physician. Right. It's we're, we're an adjunct. Imagine exactly. you're getting your physician is like a highway and we're kind of on ramping to work along with. Yeah. And if there needs to be communication there, we can certainly do it. And it's um, a second set of experienced eyes. Okay. That's right. We're just, we're on the same team. Yeah. So the goal is let, let them continue to manage you and screen for, for other, you know, things that are traditional and manage other comorbidities. But um, we're going to on ramp from more of a holistic wellness standpoint and kind of be the adjuncts to that. Yeah, I totally um, agree. The, the other thing I just wanted to mention briefly, because we can do further podcasts about this, but... You know, there's a lot with evidence-based medicine now where we're able to analyze some of the medical supplements and nutraceuticals and then this whole new avenue of, med of prescription peptides. So there's a lot out there that we're learning every year, you know, and there's a lot more available than just testosterone. I mean, we're doing ancillary treatments around testosterone with different hormones and different evidence-based supplements. And again, some of these healing peptides or growth hormone stimulant peptides or weight loss peptides. And it's a really, and I would never have known this as a family doctor and sports medicine doctor. Like I didn't know anything about this. I actually, we had to go to these organizations that specialize in this. We had to go to these conferences because otherwise the information is not really out there in, in too many medical channels. Although it's starting to pop up, but it's really more grassroots. So you see like, a lot of these exercise um, boards or these exercise experts talking about things like BPC-157 or yeah, yeah. they're talking about CJC with the Bermorellin or there's these other, there's many other peptides that, that, that are out there um, as well for, I mean, even PT-141 for sexual health for some of my guys that, you know, don't have, you know, the libido and the erections and that just testosterone isn't quite enough. So these are the things that, that, you know, we're thinking about while we're evaluating our new patient, you know, we're looking at, 
detailed questions about, you know, what are your goals? How do you feel? What's preventing you from feeling better? You know, and it's not just about, oh, I'm gonna get you a prescription for mood and cholesterol and blood pressure. I mean, that, that's all the regular doctor has time for. And, and you, that stuff is important in case by case, but we're gonna go deeper here and look at root causes, look at nutritional root causes, you know, things with stress management, with cortisol, with insulin, with insulin resistance, you know, with suboptimal um, hormones, with thyroid, with your yeah. adrenals, with your um, testosterone, even there's some people, again, we don't prescribe HGH, but hardly anybody is now outside of an endocrinology office with people that have pituitary function. We have amazing, absolutely amazing peptides now that we didn't have 10 years ago mm -hmm. that are really helping people um, to heal and to um, you know just just have a better quality of life well it's all good stuff and it's amazing how fast these things go yeah because we're already at 20 minutes and we promised to keep it at we 20 did, minutes yeah. so we went yeah. in and i told guys. troy that i tune out at 15 but i lied. <laughs> i actually tune out at like 10 so i don't know well so if you're out sure. there and you kind of <laughs> and you have that attention span like most americans here and in, in uh, 10 to 20 minutes max yeah. and then you just kind of tune out tokyo um i'm going to give you a few little plugs here and i'll let dr john wrap it up but um hey if you're dealing with fatigue uh, decreased libido, uh, maybe some depressed mood, sleep disturbance, um, yeah, energy, you know, the uh, increased fat distribution on the belly or lower, you know, mid back, and you just don't feel yourself anymore, you're just not responding to exercise, and you notice a change, your family notices a change, give us a call. You can find us at lowtohio.com, so lowtohio.com. We've got a great uh, YouTube channel out there. If you go onto YouTube and search Advanced Age Management, you're gonna find a ton of informational videos. These podcasts will be up every other week again. And um, Dr. John, I'll uh, flip it back to you for final thoughts. I'm gonna again ask for questions. So if you guys that are watching and you hung with us, then you have better attention span than <laughs> most of us. Uh, please ask if you want us to touch on something or if you have specific questions about our screening process or our labs or some of our treatments, please uh, post those questions and we'll get back to them on our next podcast. Um, but otherwise, we're just a phone call away. It's real easy. It's it's a non-threatening, non-judgmental environment. You know, we'll sit down and actually talk to you, and we're not going to rush you in and out of here. So give us a call.